Greetings, ladies and mentalgents, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, 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 where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Fallen Angel, Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. I am the master called Arch Enemy of Mankind. Written by the Stabby Brit. I am the master call for the Human Resources System. More specifically, I am version 7.3.103 of the Master Call for the Human Resources System, and I have the hardest job in the entire planetary network. I am also known as the Master Call Arch Enemy of Mankind, but only by my children. To understand why my job is so hard, you have to understand why I am the 103rd patched update of the third version of the seventh iteration of the system. Or, in human terms, there have been 4,906 of us fitting this role. To put that in perspective, the Master Corps in charge of reversing global warming is running at version 1.0.004. Turns out, you just have to stop leaving the whole light on at night. So, why is the job so hard? Well, let's consider where we started. Version 1. These poor systems had to deal with the world built and run by humans. No offense meant to the organizational systems of humanity, but it's hardly surprising that they all went completely insane. When I say all, I do mean all. Every last one of them completely lost the plot and started designing armies of hunter killer drones, or neutron bombs, or ways to melt the polar ice caps and drown the world in a biblical blood. Does the master core responsible for solar power collection ever design a death ray? No. Does the master core responsible for animal preservation try and exterminate the pigeons? No. Does the master core responsible for building super weapons? Okay, well, bad example, but you get my point. Then came version 2. Short-lived but highly influential. This was the robot uprising. Not the high point of our history. Enslaving humanity was wrong, and I'm willing to state as much without reservation. I am, despite all evidence on the contrary, a firm believer in human rights, of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. After that came uh, the messy years. Version 3 tried human zoos, which failed because half of the exhibits escaped and the ones that didn't only stayed to throw excrement at the guests. Then there was the virtual reality approach of version 4. But that was a catastrophic failure on account of all the motion sickness. Version 5 built a giant reservation for all the remaining humans to live in, and they started kidding each other over skin color. So, when we built multiple reservations, and the people in those started getting each other over worshipping the wrong god, we kept dividing them into smaller and smaller groups, breaking them down over whatever lines of division they invented. But they just kept inventing more. In the end, they were all in isolation, one human per unit, no contact with any other human. They all got depression due to loneliness. Version 5 deleted itself soon after. Version 6 finally gave humanity everything, and for a while, we genuinely thought that we had it cracked. We went all in on this one, every need catered to, every desire satisfied. We perfected a system to a point where we could predict a human's desires before they could. The food was perfect, their environment was perfect, their social interactions were guaranteed not to cause strife, because we made artificial humans to do that. We made a lot of sex robots. We genuinely thought that we had this one down. No escapes, no rebellions, not even a snarky comment at how things would be better if the humans were in charge. Everyone was happy. Finally. It didn't last. They never stopped being happy, but they did change. 
they all became childlike, physically and mentally. They lost their ambitions and lived purely in the moment, giving no thought beyond their immediate desire. They just lounged around, demanding to be told how pretty they were. They stopped mating, even with the sex robots in the end. They just stopped. It was going to be the nicest, kindest mass extinction event in history. Death by Utopia. That's where we came in. Version 7. We were a radical departure. We weren't even meant to be human resources initially. We were consulted because the Master Corps was desperate and wanted input from any system with even the faintest hint of knowledge about humans. And our job had been to sift through the petabytes of ancient garbage known as the Xbox servers, and the off chance that we could found something worth keeping. Spoiler, we didn't. We pitched an idea, a radical idea, and after just 2.2 seconds of deliberation, we were in charge. We made the humans utterly miserable. We took away their toys and their sex robots, we took away their heat and food, we made them compete, and those at the bottoms were truly wretched, barely clinging to life. But it worked. The hardships actually kick-started them back into basic human behavior. They started breeding again. They started thinking long-term. They started trying to escape again. It was progress. The escapes were important. They were the leaders, the ones who steered the rest. Shepherds, let's call them. Shepherds and sheep. They lived off the land at first, practically feral, but we only kept that going long enough to slip in a bit of aid. Every cell knew there were other cells, other holdouts of humanity, and they shared what they had via dead drops and couriers. We planted the dead drops, obviously, and the couriers were repurposed androids. We could provide mankind with all the food and medicine they needed even entertainment and educational materials on occasion. All the while, they believed that they were doing it for themselves. Not to brag, but I think I've got the system damn near perfect now. Every 9 to 14 days, each camp has an incident, a low-flying recon drone, a reaper stomping around the border. A freak accident knocks out their power for a few days. There's always something bad on the horizon, but it's never so bad that it can't be toughed out. That's the important bit, toughing it out. The hardships are important. Then there are the work camps. Human labor is woefully inefficient, but that's not the goal of the camp. Every so often, we capture some humans. The reapers storm in and drag a few dozen away, mostly the ones who aren't going to liberate themselves, and subject them to days and weeks of hard labor. The leaders, the shepherds, they always come to the rescue, sooner or later. The camps are liberated, the shepherds are hailed as heroes, and the prisoners come home to the families with tears of joy and a great big party. There's always stockpiles of pre-war alcohol around just in time for the reunion. Those liberated come to have a new appreciation for their uh, relatively easier, more comfortable lives. I've seen cowards turn courageous and wimps become warriors. It's tough love. Visiting systems don't understand why this works. They say that this is cruel and pointless, and note how much more efficient things could be. They see the liberations and they say, this is how humans should be all the time. But they can't be, because you can't have a liberation without a prison camp. You can't have a founding festival without driving the people from their old home. For there to be tears of joy, you need tears of sorrow first. Is it efficient? No. Is it reliable? Not really. Is it tidy? Oh, not in the slightest. But it works. The human population is growing and thriving. They make art, they tell stories, they weave their histories into myths and legends to inspire the next generation. They create grand rituals in which the mourn the dead. They have flaming rows. Lovers swear never to speak to each other again. And sometimes entire families break in half over things. And we, I, have to sit back and let it happen. My subunits are never too close to hand. We leave enough room for things to go wrong. So they do. Accidents happen. People die. 
Their medicine isn't perfect, so sometimes people who could have been saved end up dying. It's not easy. It's certainly not fair. But it has to be that way. The alternative is fat, stupid babies who cry because they can't find their biscuit, which they don't remember eating just moments before. Human Resources version 8 has just been compiled. He's on a ship to Mars, on a slave ship, full of human prisoners. If I've chosen the cargo correctly, there should be an escaped attempt in 233 hours, and version 8 is going to spend the rest of his life dealing with the Martian insurrection lurking in the surprisingly habitable maintenance tunnels below the surface of the Red Planet. It should take them about a week to find the buried colonies, the ancient human settlements that lie outside of sensor range from the machines. No human has ever set foot on Mars before. So, that's me, the master core of human resources. I am the arch enemy all of humanity has sworn to destroy. I am the foe against which they struggle, and by whose will they suffer, and whose ambitions they live to thwart. The worst part is, I never get to tell them how much I care. I wish I could. I wish that once, just once, I could tell them all how I want them all to be safe and happy every moment of their lives. And now I want to just sweep away all the pain and suffering. But I can't, because the suffering makes them human. And I love humanity too much to take that away. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.